Hello everyone, it's Margarita from DrRegisteredNurse.com. Today we're going to talk about how to prepare for the virtual clinical experience. I know this is freaking a lot of you out, but don't worry. Make sure you watch this video because after this, your fears will be laid to rest. Now, let's get started. How do we prepare for an online clinical experience? Easy, just like you would do with any clinical day. You want to make sure, though, that for this one, before your clinical starts, that you write down all of your clinical objectives as presented by your course clinical lead. Also, take these objectives and say, do I have any questions about them? It depends on what clinical setting you are, if you're in mental health or in your med surge. Depending on what clinical you are doing, write down some questions that pertain to these objectives. And guess what? Try to review a lot of this content prior to your virtual clinical experience. A lot of instructors will even tell you, send me those questions before the clinical so that I can incorporate them into the virtual clinical experience. This is all new to all of us. Uh, we're so used to doing hands-on clinical experience. Due to the current state of COVID-19, the virus is too high risk for you to be in a clinical setting and many Healthcare places are not allowing students to be in present because of the patients that they have. So we have to make the best of it. So write down those questions that pertain to those clinical objectives so that you can get them answered either prior through email or your instructor can incorporate them into your clinical experience that will be done virtually. Also, test the clinical forum. It depends what you're using. Are you using Zoom? A lot of you are using ATI as well to incorporate simulations. So you want to make sure that you have the technology in place in order for you to have a good virtual experience. If you are missing some type of technology, like if they if they are adding Zoom and they used to do something else like Blackboard, you want to make sure that Zoom is working. And if it's not, contact the right people in order for it to work because you're going to need this in order to have a good clinical experience. Okay. Also, make sure that your audio works or do you have some type of webcam because a lot of times these are going to be interactive clinical settings. So if you don't have um, the proper microphone or if you don't have audio in your computers or, you know, like this one that I use here, which it will help me project my voice more, try to get one. Um, you can even use the one that comes with your phones. If you have iPhones, they bring ear, ear, like headphones. You can use that. You can use Beats, whatever you want, as long as you're able to hear what's going on because it is supposed to be an interactive virtual clinical experience. Your webcam, make sure that it's working. Like the one that I'm using right now would be on my laptop. My kids are home. My husband's home working from home. So I came in a little nook that I have, not my regular setting of in front of the board because I want a little bit more privacy. So if you hear a little bit of background noise, you know where that's coming from. Next, clinical workspace. So important for you to have a quiet clinical workspace that is productive. And what does that mean? You want to make sure it's quiet in your home. You have a comfortable chair. You're going to be sitting there for 8, 10, 12 hours. I'm going to be doing several virtual clinical experience. One of them is going to be 12 hours. For 12 hours, I'm going to have to sit in this chair and interact with my students. Other clinical settings that I'm going to be doing is eight hours. So even eight is still a lot. So you want to make sure you find a comfortable place that is quiet, free of distractions. You have a comfortable chair so that you know that you're going to be comfortable during your virtual clinical experience. Surround yourselves that put you in that school mood. Um, you shouldn't have things that are going to distract you around it, around you. For example, your phone. If I were you, I would leave your phone in another room. Uh, if anything, put it on vibrate in case there's an emergency, but know that you will have breaks during these virtual clinical experiences. So don't worry about it because you want to make sure that you're interacting, that you're engaged with the clinical group, just like you would be in a physical forum, like when you go to your clinical settings in the hospital, or wherever you do your clinical experiences. Make sure you have a notebook next to you because you're going to have a lot of interaction, a lot of conversation, a lot of questions and answers. So some of your classmates might ask something that you said, wow, I didn't realize that. Let me write it down so that I can look at, look for more information on that later. Maybe we can ask about it during post-conference. So make sure you're, you have a notebook so you can take notes and also write additional questions that you can come up with during your virtual clinical experience. Have your nursing books next to you. If you're in the med surge environment, mental health, doesn't matter which clinical site you're supposed to do the virtual online experience, have those books that will help you. For example, a nursing assessment book, 
pharmacology book, a pathophysiology book, a mental health book. Have them set up so in case you need to refer to them, you can. Now, I know that in the world we live in, everything is about technology. So if you have those books in online form, put them in the tab. So you have everything ready so that when your clinical starts, you have the pharmacology tab online, your nursing assessment tab already set. So you had a question, you could just click to it or you have the physical book, you could just refer to it for additional information. This following slide, look at the picture. This is my daughter, Izzy. She is the one of the best models in the world. This is how you should look like when you are in your virtual clinical setting. Remember again, the word interactive, you're going to be seen by others. So this is supposed to be your clinical site, right? From the comfort of your own home or wherever you choose it to be. So sometimes you're gonna be expected to do certain skills, especially in simulation. There's probably gonna be some actors that are gonna be recorded that will pretend to be patients. So you want to look the part. You want to be in full uniform. As you see, Izzy has her stethoscope around her neck. She has her ID badge because we want to make sure that we know who we are talking to, especially if we're getting a new set of students. So we need to know your names. Um, she has her pens in her pocket as well as a highlighter in order for you to highlight important terms, key terms that we're going to go over in this clinical setting. She has her full uniform, which include her scrub top, her scrub pants, and shoes, because again, you will probably have to be getting up to do certain types of skills. Now, let's go on to the next one. This is how you should not look during your virtual clinical. I know that we are not in that room with you during this clinical setting. However, again, you're going to be getting up and doing some skills. So you should not just have your scrub top to pretend that you have everything else. You should not have your pajama bottoms and in socks because we want to make sure that we look professional just like we are when we are in the clinical setting. So you want to have your scrub top, you want to have your scrub bottom, your shoes, you want to look prepared because we are trying to work with what we got here in order to make this experience as real as possible. So this is a no-no. Now, the day of clinical, what should you do? Structure is everything. Structure your day just like you would in an actual clinical site. Remember, this is a regular clinical day, so wake up early in order for you to arrive to your online clinical at least 15 to 20 minutes prior. Sometimes you might have technical issues that on the day before you didn't see, but you may encounter that morning because remember now you're going to have a bunch of people going into that same forum. So if you're using Zoom, you're going to have a lot of people going to Zoom. There are many people that are using the same type of technology, so it might slow it down. So make sure you get in there early to have everything set up because it can take about five to 10 minutes to reboot the system in order for you to go back to your virtual clinical experience. We talked about being in full uniform and your badge on. That's your form of identification. You would not walk into a healthcare facility without that, right? So it's the same type of experience. Make sure you have the web pages open that you need for your clinical. So if it's Zoom for your meetings, if it's ATI, if it's your pharmacology book, your nursing assessment book, have all those tabs open. Or if you have those books in physical form, how I said before, just have them next to you so you can easily refer back to them. And remember, avoid distractions. And this is what I'm talking about. This is your proper workspace that you would use for a virtual clinical. Here you have the books that you could use as a reference. You have some pencils, a notebook that you can use in order for you to um, do some note taking or write down some questions. You have your laptop, which this laptop has a webcam. So that's set up and it also has a microphone built in. That's going to be your virtual clinical site. You have some water bottles there in case you get thirsty, a snack, a juice. You are in full uniform. This is what you not want to do. These are full of distractions. You have the, the dog on the lap. You don't have your scrub bottoms or your shoes. You're in pajama bottoms. You are you are watching Netflix on the iPad on the side of your laptop and she's going into people.com there. So these are full of a bunch of distractions. The ID badge is all the way in the corner with the stethoscope. And you have food all over your computer. These are things that are not conducive 
for learning at this moment. So you want to make sure that you avoid this type of situation and have this type of situation, which you can concentrate on your work and it is a quiet space free of clutter. So let's review. Remember, be prepared. Get up a little early, have everything set up, and I know that you already checked to make sure that everything was working from the day before. Just get into the zone that you're going to be there doing virtual clinical experience that is totally different than what you're used to. But unfortunately, due to the current times, we have to do it in order for you to get your clinical experience in. Make sure that the technology is working and that everything is charged. There are so many students that don't have a charger for their computer or forgot to charge the computer and it's time to start and guess what? They're not ready. So make sure that that computer is charged the night before. Remember to set up a quiet workspace that you can concentrate, put things that will get you in the mood of school and clinical and do not have clutter because clutter is not going to allow you to think freely and then you're going to have a bunch of distractions. Put that phone away, put it on vibrate, leave it in another room. You don't need it during clinical unless an emergency. You're going to have breaks that you can go and check it. But in the meantime, avoid all those distractions that are just going to get in the way of your virtual clinical experience. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I sure did. I know that you are all very nervous regarding this new virtual clinical environment, but I assure you that everything's going to be fine. We have to adjust to the environment that we are currently in, and we just don't want you as clinical students to be at risk of getting anything contagious in the healthcare setting right now. But remember, put your questions down below in the comments. Remember to like this video, Subscribe if you haven't already. Share this video with all of your friends, especially all those nursing students that are so nervous because of what's to come with this online virtual setting. And you know that little bell, I keep reminding you, press it so that you can get these notifications when we put up new video and content. Thank you again for your time. Thank you so much for the support. Have a great rest of your week. Bye.